Hi everyone, and welcome to my how-to guide on vacuforming. Today, I'm going to talk about what vacuforming is, what projects it is good for, how it works, the different types of vacuformers for the do-it-yourselfer, designing bucks, and the types of plastic you can use in vacuforming, and a basic rundown of vacuformer troubleshooting. I'm going to try and be as comprehensive as possible with the information in this video, but if you have any questions, please throw it down there in the comments section and I'll do my best to get back to you. In this video, I will also be doing an end-to-end -end overview with this buck. We will use it as an example to talk about designing bucks, we will vacuum it, and we will trim the final piece from the sheet. Vacuum forming is a thermoforming process where a heated sheet of plastic is put over a positive master. When vacuum is applied, the plastic is forced against the mold and forms the design of your master. Vacuum forming makes single-sided forms, good for hollow components or items like masks or visors. Vacuum forming is also great for mass production of an item. Whereas 3D printing might be better if you just needed a one-off. Provided your buck has been finished nicely, vacuum forming also has less finishing time than a comparable 3D printed item. Now any form that you make will only be as nice as the master that you use to make it, so keep that in mind. For this exercise, my goal is to create the soda cup lid from this model. I only need to capture the top and sides to form the cap, and I want a thin plastic end result which is in line with what vacuum forming provides. Basically, the end result should be a larger version of this clear plastic cup lid. Let's start by identifying all the components of the machine. All vacuum forming machines will look a little different, but they all have the same basic components. I'll be using mine for this example, but we will go over how to build your own in a later segment. The first is the heating element, which is the method you use to bring the plastic sheet up to formable temperature. You can see here that I have some quartz heaters inside a 2x2 two two foot MDF box to heat my plastic. The second is the platen, which is where the forming takes place. It provides a staging area for the buck and is where the vacuum is applied. Third is the buck itself, which is the master that you will be forming. The fourth component is the frames, which will carry the plastic sheeting and provide a vacuum seal on top of the platen. Lastly, but most importantly, is the vacuum source. Place plastic sheet within the frames and clamp. Allow your heating element to bring the plastic up to the formable temperature. When the plastic is uniformly heated and an appropriate amount of sag has been achieved, move the frames of the plastic from the heating element to the platen. Move the heated plastic down over your buck, which is spaced above the platen, usually on nickels, and create a seal on the platen. Apply vacuum and maintain the frame to platen seal while the air is evacuated from underneath the plastic through the top of the platen. As the air is evacuated from underneath the plastic, it will begin to form around the master. Leave the plastic on the buck and platen for about 30 seconds, then you can demold the plastic from the buck. The most important thing to answer is the question of scale. The components you choose will be directly affected by the size of the biggest item you plan to make. The forming size in one direction equals the width of the top place plus two times height. Here's an example. This buck is a box with a 12 inch top face and is four inches tall. Therefore, we have 12 plus two times height, which is four, equaling 20. This means I would need a formable area of 20 inches by 20 inches. Let's start with the heating element. If you plan to go small, something like a toaster oven may work great for you. If you plan on doing larger forms, you may want to invest in a standalone heater like the one I've been using. Please note that whatever heating element you choose, it must provide uniform heat to get the proper deformation of the plastic. No heat guns. Next, let's cover the platen. A good platen is very important to your vacuum forming success. There are two major types of hole patterns to choose from. A single central hole, usually fairly large in diameter, 
or an array of multiple smaller holes for the vacuum to be applied through. With the multi-hole array, you will need to also build a chamber for the vacuum where that is not necessary with a single hole platen. Although it is more difficult to create, I really prefer the multi-hole array at any scale. Um, as far as building materials go, I suggest using a 3 quarter inch board if you're doing any mid-size to large scale forming, let's say 1 to 2 feet in size or larger. If you're planning to form at toaster oven scale, or you know smaller scales, maybe like around a foot um, or under a foot, um, half inch MDF will uh, likely be fine in place of the three quarters. Platins can also use different sealing methods. You can utilize gasket material around the edge to form a seal with your frames housing the plastic, or you can use curved edges. With the curved edge platen, your frame opening must be larger than the platen, it utilizes the plastic itself drawn over the edge to create the seal. Frames are what carry your plastic, and there are a few different types. For you folks interested in forming at toaster oven scale, cutting a window in a toaster oven tray may be the perfect way to go. For mid-size forming, you can utilize aluminum window screen frames. As a note, I have tried this and I wasn't super enamored with the results. The frames have a tendency to twist and have a difficult time creating an excellent seal on the platen. Hot aluminum frames from an oven or other heat source might also melt the gasket material on the platen if you use that style. I think aluminum frames may perform best on a platen with a curved edge draw over style. Instead of aluminum frames, I would suggest using half inch MDF sheets that you've cut the center out of. Equally important is the clamping hardware. If you're using a toaster oven tray or aluminum frames, you can use large binder clips to keep the frames clamped together. If you're using an MDF sheet like I am, I suggest some form of bolt and wing nut arrangement. Now it's time for the fun part, the vacuum source. There are two major styles of vacuum charge, the vacuum cleaner and the contained vacuum charge. If you plan on using a vacuum cleaner, the best for forming are the canister style or Dyson vacuums. This project is exceptionally easy if you happen to already own one of these types of vacuums, or if you can find a small cheap canister vacuum second hand. Just make sure you have enough power for your application. If you're forming small, a cheap vacuum cleaner is fine. If you're trying to form something that's two feet by two feet, you might need a little more oomph. The other style of charge, the contained charge, is the one I've decided to use given my scale, as I don't want to drop the dosh for a Dyson. For the contained vacuum charge, you have a standalone vacuum pump that evacuates a container. You want to have a valve on your container to make sure you store this charge, as any draw from the vacuum pump itself is insufficient in drawing a form. The pros to a contained charge is that it can be extremely strong. I usually evacuate my containers to about negative 28 inches of mercury, which is a lot of force. The downside is you only get one shot when you turn the valve, where a vacuum cleaner will be constantly on and pulling even if you mess up the seal. With some practice, I believe the stored vacuum charge can be equal to a Dyson or maybe even better, but it really depends on a good frame to platen seal. Now that you understand what a vacuum former is and how it works, let's step back and talk about designing bucks. The first step is identifying if your model is suitable for the vacuum forming process and not better handled by some other construction methods. It's important to note that vacuum forming process can only form a single face. For instance, if you wanted to form a box, you would need to glue together two vacuum form poles. Another thing to consider is resolution. Vacuum forming will always soak up some of the resolution of your master. Sharp corners will be duller. If this is a mass production plastic appeal you're looking for, it's ideal. If it's not, I suggest 3D printing your item instead of vacuum forming. However, this can always soak up some minor imperfections in your master as well. 90 degree walls. They do add some difficulty, but they can be done. Sometimes they have a side effect of adding some pinching to the bottom corners. 
on our example buck that we will be vacuum forming today, uh, we do have a 90 degree wall around the edge, but at this height, I do not think it'll be a problem. Height. The higher the buck, the more the plastic must be heated. If the plastic is heated too much, it can add pinching to the bottom corners of your forms. If heated too little, it can be hard to make a good seal with the frames. Height or deep draw is attainable, but depends on your former size. For our example buck, uh, I don't think height will be a problem. I think this is about two and a half inches, which I have done things a lot taller, so this one will be perfectly fine. Undercuts. The buck must have no undercuts anywhere on the side or bottom. If you try to form a buck with undercuts, you will not be able to free your master from the plastic sheet and you will have to cut it out, possibly damaging your buck. On our example buck, you can see that there are no undercuts. In fact, it flares out a little bit. So this will separate from the plastic sheet after forming just fine. Size. Make sure your buck fits in the formable area of your vacuum former. As far as size goes, the width of the top is 13 inches and the height is about two and a half inches. So two times two and a half gives us five plus the 13 of the top means that this buck will require at least 18 inches of forming area. So 18 by 18. Luckily, the platen in the machine we'll be using today has a forming area of a little over 21 inches by 21. So this will fit just fine. Multiple materials can be used to create bucks, but I personally suggest MDF wood glue for gluing together MDF pieces and Bondo for finishing it all off. The MDF is somewhat hard to cut, but it is cheap available and has really great flat faces. It also has the benefit of being able to take the heat of the vacuum forming process. Whatever you use as a master, make sure it can withstand 300 degrees Fahrenheit for at least one minute without deforming or melting. As far as materials go, for our example buck, you can see it is primarily constructed of MDF and all of the light blue or gray here is all of the Bondo material I've used to finish it. Vertical padding. It is a good idea to make the form taller than you need it to be. So for instance, if I wanted to form to this edge, you can see I've added another half inch buffer height wise to the bottom of this form. The forming process, especially with vertical edges, will leave a small curve at the bottom or may induce some minor pinching in the corners. If your buck has some vertical padding at the bottom, during your trimming process, you can just trim away all those problem defects and have a perfect piece. As far as vertical padding goes, the actual form, as you know from the 3D model, ends at this flare right about here. So what I've done is I've added an extra half an inch of vertical padding here so that if any uh, pinching or flaring or any other deformations happen at the bottom that I don't want, I can just trim them away from my final piece. Trapped air. If you have an inset section on the top of your master, air might get trapped in this area and result in a less than ideal form. If air is trapped and escapes, you'll sometimes hear a banging noise during the vacuum form process. If you do, not a big deal, but it might indicate that air is getting trapped somewhere. If you have an area where air might get trapped, like for instance these recesses right here, or you want to ensure more definition in these areas, which I definitely did on this form, you can also design or drill some access holes through the master to allow the air to evacuate out the bottom. As far as trapped air goes on this buck, there is a chance that some air could be trapped here and in between these two rings here. Currently, I don't have any access holes drilled, but I'm going to do a couple test pulls and see if I need to make that kind of modification. The types of plastics that can be used in vacuum forming are called thermoplastics, which become pliable above a specific temperature and then solidify again upon cooling. The common types are PETG, polystyrene, and ABS. Polystyrene is an opaque plastic that's available in multiple colors, but most commonly white. It is also the most common type of plastic for the vacuum forming hobbyist. 
Deformation occurs around 250 degrees Fahrenheit, but is best for the heating element that can do 300 degrees Fahrenheit. PETG is a clear plastic shipped with a protective film, which you can see here. The most common type of plastic used for visors or RC cockpits and is used in the manufacturing industry for plastic bottles. It can also be colored or tinted with sheets or spray can solutions. It deforms faster than polystyrene when heated. In my use, I've found it to be about half the time of polystyrene given the same thickness between the two. ABS is an opaque plastic, usually available in black only, and I don't have a sample to show you. ABS usually has one flat side and the other is a little bit stippled, depending on supplier. ABS is used in industrial value forming quite often, but isn't super common in the hobbyist space. The right plastic thickness for your project depends on a couple of factors. How much abuse tolerance or structural rigidity does your piece need? How large is your platen? How strong or how much throw does your vacuum system have? How tall is your buck? Deeper draws means more heating time in a thinner resulting plastic form. For instance, starting with 80 thousandths material, these short forms became an end thickness of around 70 thousandths. However, the same plastic used in these deeper draws became an end thickness of only 30 to 40 thousandths. The most common thicknesses for polystyrene and PETG is 60 thousandths, but it is widely available in almost any increment of 20 thousandths, so starting at 20 thousandths, 40 thousandths, 60 thousandths, etc. Uh, for my past projects, I have used 80 thousandths on a 24 inch by 24 inch former with pretty good results. Um, smaller systems should probably use thinner plastic than that, but for your average size former, 60 thousandths is a great size. Um, additionally, thinner gauge plastics will also uh, lose less resolution when forming your master. For this project today, um, I want the final piece to be translucent. I will probably be spray painting it a little bit, but I'm going to start with uh, PETG plastic. And I think I'm going to start with uh, your normal 60,000s PETG that you will find most commonly for projects like this. All right, you've seen enough of me standing here explaining what we're gonna do and about our buck design, so let's go vacuform this bad boy. Start by clamping down the plastic in our frames. Since this is PETG, it's important to have already removed the protective plastic on either side. Position the buck on the platen, spacing it with nickels off the base so air can move freely underneath. Treat the buck with some high temperature Teflon spray this will help us demold the plastic from the buck after forming. Make sure to liberally cover any vertical walls. Make sure the vacuum charge is ready. Turn the heater unit on and place the frames holding the plastic on top. I suggest using a timer to track how long your plastic is on the heater for repeatable forming. Once the correct droop level has been reached, Move the frames with the plastic from the heater to above your platen. Make sure to use oven mitts or barbecue gloves to avoid burning yourself. Bring the frames and plastic down over the master and create a seal on the platen. Activate the vacuum charge and hold the frames down when forming. I usually wait for about 30 seconds for the plastic to cool, but demold when it's still warm. If you wait until the plastic has cooled fully, it might shrink around the buck and make it a lot more difficult to remove. I use an infrared thermometer and wait until the plastic is at about 150 degrees. One of the best things about vacuum forming is mass production. Once you have created a buck, you can make copy after copy after copy and after trimming away the bottom sheet here's the final result you can see our starting goal is to create something like this uh, soda lid and can safely say that we basically scaled it up and created the same exact thing it's even funny that they're pretty much the same material this is uh, PETE and this is PETG so both pet plastics um, as a, as a note, um, as you know, we started with uh, 60,000 PTG for this, 
And remember I was talking earlier that when you heat up plastic and it droops, um, it will thin out. So for example, this was heated for about two minutes and 45 seconds on my heaters. Um, your mileage will vary. And the end result, my calories say, is 52 thousands. So we didn't thin out that much, but it did thin a little bit. So when you're engineering your own vacuum forms, keep that in mind. And the longer you heat it for the taller or deeper draw you want to do, the thinner it will become. Um, but otherwise, super pleased. It trimmed up well. And if I ever make a mistake, I have more copies and I have the ability to make as many copies as I want in the future. As a side note, sometimes with these um, clear vacuum forms, um, sometimes um, Bondo dust or other small uh, imperfections and stuff like that might transfer over. Um, and if your goal is to get it clear, what I was just doing is using some car polish. And if you just lightly polish the inside, it'll usually um, lift up and remove all of those imperfections or things that transferred from your master over into your plastic. It'll uh, make it nice and clear again. Um, just as a note, make sure you use polish. Do not use compound. Compound has grit materials like sandpaper that is designed to remove material, however finely, but still remove material. Just use the polish and that will get you where you need to be. Let's quickly go over just a little bit of troubleshooting, just in case you're having a little bit of problem forming your master. Hopefully this section we can try and hit the most common items that might be keeping you from success. The first is pinching. Usually pinching around the bottom corners happens when the model is usually very tall or includes 90 degree walls. I would try less heat or modifying your buck if you can. Blow through is a sign of overheated plastic. The plastic became too thin and just couldn't sustain the vacuum and will blow through. Vacuum escaping. Check for a good seal between the bottom frame and the top of your platen, either on the curved section of your platen between the platen and the plastic itself, or if using a gasket style like I do, make sure that gasket is maintaining a good seal all the way around your platen. Low definition or trapped air. Confirm the plastic was heated enough and evenly. Confirm the vacuum source had enough throw to form the plastic in the first place, especially with those thicker plastics. If the area could be housing trapped air, try modifying the buck, like I told you earlier, with drilling holes to allow that air to evacuate. PETG bubbling or just PETG that's not clear. If the PETG is bubbling, it was heated for too long or at too high a temperature. PETG can also suffer clouding if the master itself wasn't smooth. Examples would be large sanding scratches or trying to cast on raw wood. Try finding a sandable primer that you can use for wood and sanding with a high grit at least 400 or above. Successful vacuum forming is an art of trial and error. It is unfortunately very likely that you will fail your first form and it will not be that great. However, I hope that this presentation will give you a head start on choosing the appropriate components, former size, buck design, and the type of plastic for success. When a form doesn't work, narrow down the failure to a component or a technique used. Theorize why it failed, and what you can do to fix it. I hope you've enjoyed this video guide to vacuum forming. I've tried to incorporate all the lessons from the research that I've done, as well as my personal experiences. As I have said at the start of this video, if you have any questions about the process or designing your own vacuum former, please leave a comment down in the description. And thank you for watching.